Okay, well it's been a little while since I've done anything on this Impala. We've just experienced a fairly nasty summer here in South Australia. We've had a heat wave of weeks on end of uh, 40 degree plus weather. So uh, that combined with work has pretty much kept me away from working on this thing. But uh, it's cooled down a bit now. And what I'm uh, finally doing now is I'm just going to finish off the remaining three doors in the car. And this is the uh, right hand rear door. And it's got the same problems of what the left-hand rear door had, and that's basically this bottom corner here is fairly well rusted, rusted and right in the corner. Not as bad as what the other side was, but it's going to need the same thing, another patch. And uh, this is basically what I'm doing to put the patch on. So I've cut the basic shape out that I need, and uh, I've just got some clamps on there before I do any cutting on the on the door itself. I'm using the existing panel that's on there. Uh, as a, uh, a mould so I can press my new patch panel against it and get the, the basic curvature I need and I'll just let that sit there for a while and, and work that in and uh, what I've also got to allow for on this patch is of course is the fold over sections from under the door so when you do replace a patch in the, on the bottom corner of a door always an idea to leave some excess so you can turn that over back under the door later on and same over these edges here. So here's the left hand front door and I really am hoping that I'm going to get one panel from this car where I really don't have to do too much apart from strip back the old paint and uh, maybe a slight amount of body work and, and that's pretty much it so that's what I'm hoping for but I've got a feeling that I'm not going to find that on any part of this car. So. Uh, here we go, I'm going to be doing uh, th these two doors at the same time. So now it's just a matter of uh, taking off all the seals, all the rubbers around it and stripping down the paint. So this is the driver's door on its way to getting done. It's just been completely stripped back to bare metal back and front. And I've got it in etch primer, it's just hanging up here drying. And there's only two more doors to go to do this to. And quite incredibly, this is one panel which really needs very little work. There's only one little spot of rust which I have to fill in with a bit of welding. But uh, other than that, it's all good. There's no, there's no hidden surprises on this door. No body filler, nothing. Just all plain metal. So hopefully the remaining doors are in the same shape. So I've just got, uh, this is the last door to go here. Passenger front. But it is slowly getting there. Finally I've got these quarter panels to do. I've got to cut this one out and uh, I've also got to repair the rear wheel covers, inner wheel covers, such as in here. I've got to make a new panel back here and re replace all of that, repair this, make a new little, as we uh, call it in Australia, a dog leg pillar right in here, fix all that up. So it is slowly getting there. I finally found the original colour on this car. I've just been through so many different paint to automotive paint shops with the paint code that I've got, which is 910A, 910A Horizon Blue, and nobody seems to know how to mix it. But uh, finally found a section of the car here that's still got the original paint in good shape. So uh, hopefully I can use that to, uh, to match up the colour I need. And then uh, once all that's done, got to empty out the inside of this car, blast the uh, the floor panels, door jams, get all them done, and then start putting some high filler primer on. So here's a tedious part of using a, a setup like this with this sandblaster. Here, this is, uh, I think it's a 30 gallon tank. Um, I collect all the uh, all the blasting grit that I can, and then what I do is basically I've got a sieve in here which I just use to, uh, to siphon everything out with because it does catch a lot of debris it's all the bits and pieces that uh, come off sandblasting bits of metal so this is the sandblasting setup I'm using at the moment I did build a uh, fairly large sandblasting booth a little while back to uh, do things like the, uh, the deck lid and the hood but I'm only doing smaller things now, so this is an old cage here that I've got wrapped up in plastic and I'll just 
wheel it over this then I'll pull the tarp around the cage later and that's what uh, traps all the, the sandblasting grit in so I don't actually waste any. So that's it, the tarpaulin just gets pulled up around it just with hockey straps like a set of suspenders and uh, that does the job in catching all the grit. As you can see it's starting to look the picture. I'd normally just put the chrome trims back on just loosely. They're only loosely fitted on there and some of them are held on by tape. Just to uh, just to see where it's all going, keep all the parts together. But it's looking better as it uh, goes further along. Now it's pretty much only two doors to go. This is one right here with other smaller parts near that are ready to be sandblasted. The heater unit is getting sandblasted and all that's going to be painted up as well and some uh, some rust repair work on this right hand rear door very similar to the opposite rear door so there's the heating unit just blasting this and all the different bits and pieces on here the uh, outer casing here has been blasted just going to clean that up now with the, the wire wheel a lot of surface rust on the inside obviously uh, had a bit of a water leak there at some stage surface rust on the inside that's not too bad I've had the actual core tested and that's actually pretty good so that's probably not the original core the core itself is fine There's the four shell casings or parts that make up the heater, heater unit in the car. I've just washed them off with vinegar water, so now I've got to wash that off and uh, get these ready for priming and then uh, painting in a semi gloss black. Got to have a nice looking heater unit, of course. So here's a few bits and pieces that are now going to end up in primer and uh, all front end stuff and uh, I'll let the, uh, the primer sit for about a week, let that shrink back and then put these front pieces here in uh, semi gloss black. So these are basically the paints that I'm using to do this car and now this car is going to end up being painted in acrylic lacquer um, because I'm spraying this myself so I'm not doing this in 2k paint but this is what I'm basically using here this is my my etch primer I've got grey and uh, got a litre of uh, black right there so all the front end parts obviously the black parts are getting etch primed in that and uh, the other stuff in this such as the body and I've got my acrylic primer here and uh, I use it to use this to thin it all out with and eventually when the time's right I'll get the, uh, the acrylic top coat that I've just put in a acrylic primer now it's actually a high build primer but I've thinned this out with about 10% of thinners which you're not really supposed to, it's supposed to just come straight out the gun but pieces like the rad support fan shroud I'm really not going to be too fussed about block sanding this to a uh, perfection it's going to look nice when it's done but I'll reserve that sort of work for the body so that's it for now all these parts are just uh, loosely fitted back on there I'll let that cure for about a week and uh, next week this will all be coated in semi-gloss black so it will start to look fairly nice